guys, in this video we're going to have a look at sound waves. Uh, first, what they are, then some equations associated with them, and we're finally going to look at the concept of the speed of sound. Right, so let's have a look at some descriptions. First of all, sound waves are longitudinal waves, meaning that the particles moving in the waves move parallel to the direction of the wave. Um, this leads to a creation of high and low pressure regions when the sound wave is passing through a medium. And that looks something like this. Um, if you imagine, I guess, almost the rungs of a spring, um, if you, I guess, push it on one end periodically, it'll push some rungs closer together, which will lead to some being further apart, which in turn pushes some together, and so on and so forth. Now, these places where the um, particles are close together is a high pressure region and the place where the particles are far apart will be a low pressure region. Um, so because of that we can we have um, equations that relate to the displacement of these particles as well as the pressure changes of these particles and um, yeah so that's that's what a sound wave essentially looks like as it's moving through a medium. And just note that it has to actually have a medium to propagate. You can't um, move through a vacuum like um, such as space. You can't hear anything. So um, the equation associated with sound waves is very similar to our normal wave equation. Um, this is the displacement equation. So we've got S as a function of X and T equals S max, which is essentially our amplitude um, times cos Kx minus omega T. So we've seen that many times. We understand what all these um, variables mean. Uh, the pressure um, equation is can be found from quite a complicated and unnecessary to know derivation, but it looks like this. Difference in P um, is a function of X and T equals B, which is the bulk modulus. It's just a constant that's experimentally determined. Um, it's an elastic property of the medium through which the sound wave is moving through. And we'll look at that a bit more in just a moment. So it's B times S max, that amplitude, times K, the wave number, times sine Kx minus omega T. Right, so what we see from um, these two equations, that one is a cos and one is a sine. And what that looks like is, as a graph is something like this, where the difference in P here in red and the displacement in blue, um, they essentially line up in different places. For instance, if you look at the start, where there's a maximum displacement, there's actually no change in pressure. And where there's a minimum displacement, there's no change in pressure. Um, I guess maximum negative displacement, there's no change in pressure. Where there's no displacement, there's the um, highest change in pressure. Um, and that's because when there's no displacement for a particle, the, the particles around it um, will be pushed closer towards um, that particle, therefore leading to really high pressure. And the same sort of um, relationship happens over here. So um, that's another sound wave concept. Now we're going to... Um, look at the speed of sound, but um, there are still some more equations we're going to have a look at. Right, so if you recall, the speed of a wave through a medium, um, from a previous video we, we learned that it's equal to the square root of an elastic property over an inertial property of the medium. Now, for the speed of sound, which moves through um, mediums such as air, it can actually move through liquids and solids, um, we have this equation which is on our formula sheet. V is equal to the bulk, uh, square root of the bulk modulus over the density of the um, medium. So that bulk modulus is to do with, um, it's experimentally determined and it's to do with um, each medium. And what this, what this equation tells us is that um, for one medium all sound waves will travel at exactly the same speed. So sound travels constant at a constant rate through um through a single medium and just a little rearrangement on this um on this equation we get b equals p times uh, v squared and that's 
how they actually determine the bulk modulus and we'll see where this is actually used in, a, in an equation in just a moment. Um, a lot of the time you'll be dealing with the speed of sound through air um, and it's given the variable C and it's generally somewhere in the ballpark of 330 meters per second. Um, I've seen it 343, I've seen it 330, but you'll be given that on a data sheet. So you don't need to worry about remembering that. Right, we're just going to go back to the equations and have a quick look here. Um, if, we, if you recall that pressure equation, which is equal to B times S max, K sine um, Kx minus omega T, what we want to find is the max pressure. Um, which looks like this because we know that the maximum value for um, sine is 1 or minus 1 but in this case we just take the positive so the change in pressure max or the amplitude of the change in pressure is equal to that bulk modulus times S max K but this bulk modulus isn't actually so useful for us to, um, to um, look at um, it, we'd rather write it in terms of density and velocity of a sound wave through a medium um, so we can actually substitute in um, this PV squared which we looked at before and for K um, we know from previous videos oh, I'll leave that to an exercise as an exercise for you guys to work out um, K is actually equal to omega over the velocity of wave through a medium right and we've got V squared over V there so we end up with the difference in pressure max um, equals PV omega S. Um, yeah, and that is actually on your formula sheet, and it's how we find the amplitude of changes in pressure for a sound wave moving through a medium. And that concludes this introductory video. Thanks, guys. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.